I am going to be using like six or two, three, four, five, six, seven different flutes. Um, and it's based on the history and what, what they go with. And then, um, just as with anything, you have to make last minute decisions like, oh, wait a minute, that F sharp doesn't work at all or something like that. Um, but I finally made my choices and I just hope that I pick up the right ones um, at, at the time that I want. Um, for, for many of you who might not, one, who, who would wonder why I'm playing any Baroque at all, um, it is because, mostly because, um, Telemann himself mentions it in his, his memoirs. He said that Fiddler in the tavern, a Jewish blind man, he was like extraordinary. And he's telling his, his um, good buddy, Franz Benda, man, this stuff is awesome. I'm sure there was a Jewish word for it. Um, and, you know, it was while he was in Poland. So there's a lot of, there's, there's crossovers. And um, in his, you even know from, uh, let's say his E minor concerto, um, it, it's, it's really klezmer. I'm going to start with, however, um, what what became known as Gypsy Baroque, um, and it is from a collection called the Orovska uh, collection, and it was published, uh, written, scratched. There's lots of of just pick up a pad and 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 write it down, um, and there's about seven or eight copies around the world. And um, it's from the town of, of Urovska. And it was um, apparently brought out in around 1730. Um, and the second piece is particularly delicious and will um, sound Romanian. It'll sound Hungarian. Um, it's, it's very cool to me. Um, and I think that's all I need to say right now. Um, it's 4.02. Do you think I should start? Go for okay. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for those who, who managed to get here, they're saying, yeah. Oh, wait, this is clanking. I just wanted to keep track of the, the... Someone will be in here in this particular space right at at 445 or what do i have to be concerned the next event will start at five um so, so just let, let people out in time to find their way to the next link right we need to close by about 450 so that the changeover right. can occur okay yes mm -hmm. all right and off we go
Piccolo from 1825. So I'm going to turn this off, let it not go on. Um, this was a delightful little find um, in a repair shop, I, I set, a flute. And I said, I'm looking for a Baroque piccolo. He said, well, the closest I have um, is this uh, Welsh instrument. Um, and it's for a school system in, in Wales. Um, and it, it says, you know, London and uh, the school year of 1825, so it's kind of cool. All right, and I forgot to switch flutes already. Okay, the next thing is more expected from, from Klezmer. Now we're moving ahead a little. Um, this tune is called Yichis. And for those of you who, that have a uh, Yiddish background, um, it, it's not set in stone what it really means, but um, my, my family had yichus. Um, it's, it's like your history, your, your, your truth. Um, and so I don't know why they named it that, but it's known as yichus. And then um, I'm going to play a delightful uh, little dance. It's really in, in a collection um, from the 1930s um, that is just simply called a share and it's a dance form. And what is interesting about it is that um, the you're, you may recognize it as, wait a minute, I've danced to that at weddings and bar mitzvahs, what, huh? you might recognize it. So um, I'm going to assume that it, it, it traveled from uh, Eastern Europe through maybe Israel and, and finally here. I mean, these things travel all the time, but it's, it's interesting, just like Hatikva and, and other tunes that we might know, they've had a very long history. And it could be that this is even further back Okay, we start with Yechus. And this is being played on a, um, a, bleh, a flute, a one key flute um, made by Edward Bach, B A A K.
on uh pause don't go don't go okay that was played um on a clues uh c-l-o-o-s piccolo a six one two a six keyed instrument you can really find these um pretty common on on uh ebay but this one is particularly sweet and it's named so there's plenty of unnamed of these and i think that shows its popularity um the the piccolo itself i've had where audiences uh one one audience um a few people came up and they were elderly and um they said oh i just loved oh that bring back such memories of of my my shtetl just a little too much piccolo um oh well i love piccolo the next thing is a well-known recorded uh it's called a doina d-o-i or d-o-y-n-a which is an improvisatory listening piece and these were were um played for for various reasons uh, one being if you want to uh get people's attention uh especially during too much uh levity in a in a wedding uh, we don't want we don't want the the guests to get out of hand and we also because if they if they are too happy um for too long a time then we have what is called the little dibbick who comes along and says ah, 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 ah. no 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 you you cannot do this and if if you quiet down i will leave and i won't i won't ruin your wedding um so the soloist comes out and this is rare you usually um hear of violins a lot um coming out to the to the middle of of the village and and starting to play certainly now clarinet um who's taken over our our lives uh, in the flute world um and there's even a um a trumpet doina um so it's meant to get your attention and then as typical doinas there it's followed by little frailix um which is really a word for happy it's it's a happy dance um and uh if if you ever wondered were old play players of old flutes all that good i mean you know this is pretty difficult i'm going to tell you they were um if you've listened to any classical uh historical recordings uh you don't have to wonder they they were damn good all right i just want to make sure okay then i'm gonna go on okay all right doina and this was um you can even find this online um by the original performer um at least that we have a recording of his name is Schlimke or Schlimi Kosh.
go back. You know, when your pianist doesn't listen to you, it's really kind of annoying. Okay. All right. Uh, this flute, by the way, uh, and I'll continue to play it for the next. Uh, this flute, I'm still looking for a Polish one, but uh, this one was made in Hungary, and I did get it on eBay. And um, it's got a very, very sweet sound. Um, how's the balance so far? Thumbs? Okay, great, great, great. I trust you. So um, this next set of, of two tunes, um, very, very well-known um, major piece here. Um, I'm not going to start with it, but the 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 body of this next set is called Farewell to the Homeland. And it was, it was composed by Mikhail Ozinski. Um, and it, it was composed, I believe in 1816. Um, and it, it has gone viral. There are orchestras that play it. Um, all instruments seem to want to play it. And uh, I was very excited to see this particular piece in manuscript in the folio of uh, the music that I played um, on my record called Farewell to the Homeland, um, Poyland, and uh, Poyland. And uh, uh, knowing that the band had it uh, it was an older manuscript too. So it's it's in there, it's in the klezmer repertoire. Um, and there was a researcher um, well known to us, uh, Klezmorum, that um, mentions it as a very, uh, very well-known popular piece. It's a polydez and it's played uh, when when brides and and grooms come come in, you know, as a last dance um, of the week, that kind of thing. It has a lot of importance to it. And I'm going to begin with a niggin that was also in this collection of manuscripts. It didn't have a, a title, but it's a typical singing tune, uh, wordless. And I love it, and so I've, I've put it together with it.
and pause. All right. The next set will be performed on uh, a vintage Haynes uh, flute. Um, I am fortunate to have two in my possession, one made in 1904, one made in 1907. Um, I kind of switched head joints. Um, I'm using a sharper, the, the, I, I mixed um, because this one is higher and for those who understand the, the um, method of, of design uh, and physics, um, the cork goes way down here and the embouchure hole is, is much lower. And so therefore the, the blowing um, element, the, 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 the tune, the tuning is luckily higher. Um, usually I can only play um, uh, loud pieces on the original body and head. So I've mixed it and um, I'm going to play uh, two of my compositions. Uh, one is a Kaddish, a mourner's Kaddish, um, which is a prayer that that is said in the synagogue, um, it, it must be. It's, um, it's throughout any service. Um, it's to remember um, those who passed. And there's even a delightful one that, that's really traditional and it's very fast. I was commissioned to write a klezmer service um, for the Sabbath, and so these are two pieces that I composed. First one is Mourner's Kaddish, and the second one is a fantasy called Kaddish a Fantasy. The flute doesn't have any record of recorded, uh, not not literally. Um, there's no there's no information that says that there was a um, a fantasy that was played by a flutist. The violins got a fair amount. Um, so this sort of um, appeases my, my jealousy on, on um, their, no, envy, envy. Um, and uh, here we go.
Ah, uh -huh, we're going on. This is a nice dance tune. Um, it's just a, a three-step. Get up and move. I'm watching the clock here and let's see okay this next set is a three-parter that I was honored and had the pleasure of composing for my daughter's wedding two years ago. My son, when he got married two years earlier than that, I said, oh, oh, could, could I please play something at your wedding? No. Okay, that, that message is loud and clear. Okay, not even, no, no, no. So my daughter knows how, how, how much I love both of my children and knew that she knew that I wanted to, to play. And um, they couldn't figure out what, she knows a lot of Jewish tunes um, and, uh, they couldn't come up with one. And I said, how about if I compose one for you? Oh, mommy, yes. So I composed, this is um, a, a suite of tunes. The first one, it's called, overall, it's called Laban, Life. And the first one is Di uh, Chasana. And it's the, uh, the wedding, and it's the procession for the bride. Then the second tune is a zygazint, which is a familiar um, form, and it means good health, be well. 
and what better message than than uh, to compose that for them. And then there is a l'chaim at the end. Um, and it's very fast. And um, I imagine, well, I didn't play this right then after the, after the breaking of the class, glass. But if you can imagine, um, that's what have, would have happened. And here we go. My Powell. I'm going to start that again.
Thank you. And finally, um, you can, oh, shoot. Adrian, okay. thank you so much. I, I actually think we're out of time. Was that your okay. last piece? Okay, boom, stop. Tell my pianist to stop. <laughs> thank you for inviting me and allowing me to share all of this music. And I hope I've enlightened and, and sparked an interest. Um, there is, there are wonderful little techniques that you can add to, to make it sound the way it does. Um, and it took me a few years to, to develop that sense of not just reading the notes, um, even though they were readers back then. So, um, uh, delightful to be here and thank you all for coming. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Adrian.